Last year, governments around the world subsidized fossil fuels to the tune of around 700 billion US dollars. Renewable energy received around 75 billion dollars. That means governments around the world, many of them appearing to be quite corrupt, actually subsidized fossil fuels at a rate nine times greater than renewable energy. The United Nations has officially put out a statement. They say the entire planet has hit a global tipping point. Renewable energy is now an unstoppable force. Here are the details behind the United Nations statement that was made just this week. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you'd like to become a YouTube member, I'll put a link in the description below. UN Chief Antonio Guterres says the fossil fuel age is flailing and failing. Flailing and failing as renewable energy becomes cheaper. And it is every single year. What does this mean? Well, the global switch to renewable energy has passed a positive tipping point where solar and wind power will become even cheaper and more widespread, according to two United Nations reports released on Wednesday this week. Both of them described a bright spot amid otherwise gloomy progress to curb climate change. The report, though, failed to mention that actually we hit a, well, a tipping point when it comes to coal. Coal has actually declined in demand this year for the first time in modern history. And this is something a lot of people are not actually paying the attention to. It's declining for the first time because it's being replaced with cheaper renewables. The key word there is cheaper. It's cheaper in basically every region on the planet to install solar, wind, and batteries, or some combination of those, than it is to continue burning coal. Last year, 74% of the growth in electricity generated worldwide was from wind, solar, and other green sources. According to the UN's multi-agency report called Seizing the Moment of Opportunity, it found that 92.5% of all new electricity capacity added to the grid worldwide in that time period came from renewables. So last year, of all the electricity added to the grid, 92.5% was from renewables. A small amount of coal was added, unfortunately, but the only country where coal use is actually growing and not falling is actually India. Meanwhile, sales of electric vehicles are up from 500,000 in 2015 to more than 17 million in 2024, and they're scheduled to hit 22 million in 2025, which would be growth of around 30% versus last year. The three cheapest electricity sources globally last year were onshore wind, solar panels, and new hydropower according to an energy cost report by the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, solar power now is 41% cheaper, 41%. Wind power is 55% cheaper globally than the lowest cost fuel, fossil fuels. That's a big difference, right? It kind of is insane when you see these numbers. Solar power is 41% cheaper, Wind power, 53% cheaper globally than the lowest cost fossil fuels, said the report. Fossil fuels, which are the chief cause of climate change, include coal, oil, and natural gas. Pretty staggering, isn't it? Of course, the wind, there's an asterisk on the wind. Of course, you need wind. You need the right location. Solar, you don't. 90% of the world's population lives on the sun belt. I'm going to say that a million times because most people are not, still not aware of this. 90%, so that 41% cost reduction for solar, that's relevant in 90% of the world, maybe even more than that. The fossil fuel age is flailing and failing, said United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Wednesday morning speech unveiling these reports. We are in the dawn of a new energy era, an era where cheap, clean, abundant energy powers a world rich in economic opportunity. Just follow the money, Guterres said, quoting the reports that showed last year there was $2 trillion in investment in green energy, which is about $800 billion more than in fossil fuels. Now, I should point out, people think this is because of subsidies. 
Two trillion investment must be because of subsidies. Governments are making these subsidies happen. That's the reason. This is all a big conspiracy. And really, they're all just out to get you. Now, there are millions of people who believe that. It sounds preposterous to you because you're probably intelligent, but there is millions that believe that. However, fossil fuels receive literally hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies last year. We don't know the exact number, but we know that it was over $450 billion was spent on fossil fuel subsidies last year. So saying that renewables are getting subsidies and that's the reason for their success is clearly inaccurate. UN officials say the switch to renewables, though, needs to accelerate. United Nations officials said the switch to renewable energy is remarkable compared to 10 years ago, but it's not happening fast enough. The global renewables growth has been mostly in developed countries such as China, where one-tenth of the economy is tied up in green energy. So one-tenth of China's economy is around green energy. It's spectacular. Now, that includes countries as well as India and Brazil. Africa represented less than 2% of the new green energy capacity installed last year, despite having great electrification needs, said the report. United Nations officials blame the high cost of capital for the global south. However, corruption, of course, is a major issue. Therefore, though, I should point out that 55% of Africa's energy is currently renewable energy. The global south must be empowered to generate its own electricity without adding to already unsustainable levels of debts, said Bahamian climate scientist Adele Thomas to the Natural Resources Defense Council. Thomas, who did not work on the reports, added that they debunk the myth that cleaner energy cannot compete with fossil fuels. Instead, showing a clean energy future is not just possible, but it is actually inevitable. The UN reports are right on the money, said University of Michigan Environment Dean Jonathan Overpeck, who also wasn't part of the studies. He said the economic tipping point leads to a cycle that keeps driving renewable costs down and makes fossil fuel power less and less desirable. This is a virtuous cycle. And renewables are growing despite massive subsidies for fossil fuels. Unfortunately, the truth is fossil fuels are getting nearly nine times the government consumption subsidies that renewables get. Nine times. Let that sink in. Guterres and the report said in 2023, global fossil fuel subsidies amounted to $620 billion, compared to $70 billion for renewables. That is unbelievable. But just as renewables are booming, unfortunately, fossil fuel production globally is still increasing instead of going down in response. United Nations officials said that's because power demand is increasing overall, spurred by developing countries, artificial intelligence, data centers, and the need for cooling in an even warmer world. And actually, the truth is, this is more about corruption. This is more about for the fossil fuel having industry having its tentacles in government. It's just entwined, unfortunately, and that's what it comes down to. A typical AI data center, they said, it is up as much electricity as 100,000 homes. By 2030, data centers could consume as much electricity as all of Japan does today. But that doesn't really account for the fact that well, a lot of these major tech firms are using renewables to power their data centers, not fossil fuels. Solar and wind power, though, face US cuts to renewable energy programs, and this is because of a direct, really a direct result of voting in Donald Trump. In the United States, solar and wind power have been, had been growing at a rate of 12.3% per year from 2018 to 2023, the IRENA report said. But since President Donald Trump took office earlier this year, his administration has withdrawn the nation from the landmark Paris Climate Accord and cut many federal renewable energy programs with a renewed emphasis on fossil fuels. <clears throat> Guterres warned nations hanging on to fossil fuels that they were heading down a dangerous, dangerous path that would make them poorer, not richer, without naming the United States specifically, but clearly referring to them. Countries that cling to fossil fuels are not protecting their economies. They are sabotaging them, driving up costs, 
undermining competitiveness, locking in stranded assets. And really, this will hurt mum and dad investors all across the United States, who are many of which are heavily invested in stranded assets in the fossil fuel industry. Renewables are the smart way to go for energy security, Guterres said. With renewables, he said, there are no price spikes for sunlight, no embargoes on wind. David Waskow of the World Resources Institute said the message of problems mixed with optimism makes sense. He compared Tuesday's assessment to climbing a mountain and taking time halfway through to look down and appreciate how far you've come, but looking up shows the trek is getting steeper. Guterres said he understands how young people could have a sense of doom and gloom and regrets that his generation has left them, but all is not lost. This is not inevitable. We have the tools, we have the instruments, the capacity to change course, said the United Nations. There are reasons to be hopeful.